Welcome Capricorn for your monthly forecast for November for the Sun or the Ascendant. If you've yet to subscribe to my channel, I'd be honoured if you did so now. Please click or tap on the bell notification uh, image. As this month begins, you're inheriting a rush of exciting energy from last month in the guise of the new moon in Scorpio. This is very much to do with your future. It's to do with the things that you feel uh, idealistic about. It's about your friendships, your group interactions. But it was in an opposition with Uranus, the planet of surprises, which has been giving you an extra dimension since it moved into the sign of Taurus. Now this combination is going to provide a backdrop for the first three weeks of this month, suggesting that the more flexible you can be and the more open to new ideas, the better you can thrive. But there is another need to be flexible because Mercury, the planet of communication, is actually tracking backwards as this month begins in a retrograde. So this points towards the potential for stops, starts, changes of minds, last minute changes of plans, not all yours, it could come through other people. Also on the 4th, there is a quarter moon, and this quarter moon just asks you to check out that the plans that you are developing will work in a practical dimension, So, it, especially if they're more idealistic. However, on the 2nd of this month, we see Venus, the planet of love, but also attraction and money, move into a more sheltered zone. Venus is going to be here through to the 25th, when it will then move into your sign, and that will be a new beginning for you around your relationships. But in the interim, it could see you a bit more reflective, thinking carefully about what you want from your closest alliances. It could also flag up the potential for someone from your past to come back into your thinking. They may come back in person, or it could be that you suddenly get the desire to check out where they're up to through social media. But certainly you're going to be feeling a lot more nostalgic about relationships. And if a relationship isn't working quite as you would like in this month, an existing time, I do feel feeling that you're nurtured and understood at a deeper emotional level is going to be part of the needs that you're wanting to be fulfilled. Now, there is going to be from the 5th through to the 11th, a wonderful link between the Sun and Saturn, your ruler, in Capricorn. So where you have got a well-worked-out future plan that you're sure about, you've done your research, you've been very thorough and very precise, it can start to shape up really encouragingly. Also from the 6th through to the 12th, the Sun in Scorpio forges a lovely link with Neptune in your sector of everyday communication. If there is something that you need to inspire something about, this gives you a fabulous opportunity to do it. But the full moon, which occurs on the 12th, does ask you to think about your time management. But it also asks you to think about the players in your world, whether that is through your group associations or a closer alliance. And because of Mercury's retrograde and also Venus being in that sheltered area, this can be, in the following two weeks, a very critical time for you. Fortunately, from the 11th through to the 17th, the Sun makes a link with Pluto, the planet of change in your sign. So the change that you start to make, whether it's inside yourself or in terms of your environment, can again be successful. There is just one thing that you need to be conscious of in the first 10 days of this month, however, and that sees Mars in the most assertive and self-confident part of your scope, pushing you to raise your profile and get your voice heard, well, that's in conflict with Pluto. So one of the things that you need to do this month is not try too hard. It is to let things just unfold at a natural pace. Then again, there may be someone who's quite influential who tries to resist your talents and you might have to push back if they're in any way being unfair in terms of stopping you getting ahead. Now there is, uh, on the 12th, that full moon, which is asking you potentially to realign, certainly your time management, but equally from the 12th through to the 17th, Venus forges a quite beautiful link to Jupiter. 
This can bring some real good fortune to you, but not good fortune that you're necessarily expecting. It could come completely out of the ether, or it could be linked to someone from your past, but there is some kind of special magic linked to past deeds, past karma, and it could come back to you big time during that period of days. Which brings us to the 19th of the month, when Mars punches its way into the sign of Scorpio, which is fabulous for you. Mercury ends its retrograde, but there's also a quarter moon in the sign of Leo, which for you is a little, a little bit more complex. It's possible that there's going to be some politics washing around a group situation in the week following that. And just steer clear if you can. With Mercury going forwards, you're going to start to get the feeling that your plans are picking up momentum. And with Mars moving into Scorpio, this is going to give you the signal, the green light, to really push forwards with much more uh, sense of purpose and feeling that you're on the right track. The 23rd, however, does see the Sun move into the sign of Sagittarius, which naturally for you is a part of the cycle where you will just reflect a little bit more and just tune back from others. And at times you may have a desire to have a little bit more peace and tranquility. The new moon of the 26th is a time to embrace any form of healing or spirituality. I've got calm, tranquility, all these kind of things will be very good for you at that time. But there's no doubting with Venus moving into your sign on the same day, your star quality really is ratcheted up several notches. But then in the last 10 days of this month, Mars goes into an opposition with Uranus. So Uranus began this month having a profound impact on the new moon, and it ends the month having a very major impact on the planet of passion, Mars. This suggests that your love life, your direction in life, your friendships can all be subject to sudden desires, impulsive moves. Now that may sound very un-Capricornian because of course you are someone who tends to be very steady in your approach to situations, but actually doing something that's a bit more spontaneous, daring, even a bit crazy can actually be so life enforcing for you, it can give you a big lift because it creates stimulation. And one of the things that Uranus has been teaching you in its part journey for four and a half months of 2018 in the sign of Taurus and its journey in this year in the sign of Taurus is to be a bit more daring, not to let other people set your boundaries, not to let other people decide on who you should be. So a very, very exciting, even thrilling end to this month, Capricorn, when you really can demonstrate how you can be so uh, creative, uh, how you can maximize your opportunities socially, how you can network, but also how at a deeper level you can work out where you really want to be around one personal relationship. If you'd like to know what 2020 will hold for you beyond your zodiac sign, please click the link beneath this video. If you order this year, you'll get the rest of this year free, as well as all of 220, and this requires your time, date, and place of birth, and you will get 30% off as well. But for now, it's been a real pleasure being with you. Good luck and goodbye.